Maybe you can help me out. What rhymes with I love you? Your rent is due and I want it. Listen, Mrs. Wilson, I'm about to finish your great composition. Now listen to me. I'm tired of all this stalling. I want it. Came from up front. Who fired that shot? There's uh, us. Sally, away here, Sally. Here we start. finish of our new act and is it a riot yes and you're causing a riot and besides that i heard a shot a shot oh yeah that's our revolver we didn't know it was loaded yes but i heard it twice sure <laughs> we had a fire twice to be sure that it wasn't loaded once <laughs> are you sure that it's empty now oh sure sure ah, oh, shot. why mrs oh listen, well, i listen. heard a shot oh listen it was only a blank cartridge oh. you just got the wadding <laughs> the wadding huh I want you to quit making a shooting gallery out of my hotel. Yes, yes. Mrs. Wilson. <laughs> what is that? Oh, that. <laughs> that's my partner. You know, that's another part of our act. Oink, oink. Oink. I see. Oink. Well, what was that? Oink, oink. Oink, oink. Oink, oink. Oh, he's paying his seal, is he? Uh, yeah, he's... Uh, <coughs> Throw him up, and shut him up. Or I will. No, you go. I'll keep him quiet. Yeah, he's got to be quiet. Hey, 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 hey. Rehearsal's over. I don't think she likes our act. It certainly looks fishy to me. What'd you do with the bucket? The bucket? Yes, Well, I put her... <coughs> You're keeping something undercover. That's a seagoing carnivorous mallow. Oh, what? Just play it seal to you, Mrs. Wilson. Well, whatever it is, get it out of here. Oh, but Mrs. Wilson, Sally is an artist brought from the wilds of Oklahoma to terrific expense in order to make her New York debut at the Eldridge Theater. I don't care if she makes her debut at the Metropolitan Opera House. I'll give you till six o'clock to pack it for things and get out of here. Say the Eldridge Theater? Eldridge Theater? Why, that place is haunted. I wouldn't work in that spook trap for a thousand a week. Say, for a thousand a week, I'd play in a moss trap. What? Here we are. Goody, goody. 
goody. <laughs> hey. Hey, they're opening next week. They must be in rehearsal. Yeah, it's a good thing we got here, huh? Are you sure you know the manager? Tell them. <laughs> We're just like this. Well, I'll go in with you. Oh, no, wait a minute. You stay here because we want to set the stage and give Sally a grand entrance. Okay. <laughs> oh, it's a girl show. Where is everybody? How should I know? What was that? Oh, that's a door. <laughs> I knew it all the time. Hey, wait a minute. No, we've got to find this guy. Say, listen, are you kidding? Kidding? This is important business with me. This is my livelihood. I don't like the looks of this place. Let's get out of here. Well, we've got to find Eldridge. Can't we use the phone? Oh, shut up. There must be someone around here. Hello! Hello! Down there. Who was that? Why, that's you. But I'm down here. Of course you are. Then how did I get up there? That's your voice. That's an echo. But how did my voice get up there? Here, I'll show you. The king! <laughs> you must be very quiet during the performance. Colossal. Yes. He's positively invisible. Bravo! Bravo! Have you finished? Yes. Just listen to that audience. They're going crazy. They're going crazy? Yes. Bravo! Bravo! Get down, Roger. Bravo! Come on, man. Ah, there ain't nobody here. No, we're all right. Come on, Roger. Here, Quiet. Quiet. Wait a minute, I'm all right. Why don't you be calm like me? Has he gone? Yeah. You know, for, for a moment I thought it was us. Wasn't it? Of course not. Oh. I don't feel so good. I feel something coming over us. So do I. Are you Mr. Eldridge? I'm not Mr. Eldridge. Don't tell me you're Mrs. Eldridge. I'm Mr. Bailey. Not Barnum and Bailey. Well, I've got the greatest wait a thing minute, to... Wait, I own this theater. I'm Miss Eldridge. <laughs> we found an Eldridge. Why, Miss Eldridge, we traveled a thousand miles to see you. I have a letter of introduction here from a friend. That is, I did have... Hey, you You've got, got it. it. I've got it. No. no. You got it. Wait a minute, I put it right in your vest pocket. Hey, okay. hey, wait, wait, wait a minute, you've got it down here. Wait, I saw a little... <laughs> No, it's over here. I put it in this pocket right down here. Hey, wait a minute. Down here. I put it down. Hey, give me that letter there. I had it. Wait a minute. Give me this. Come on. Listen. Hey, wait a minute. I know I put it in here. Maybe I put it in there. Stop, will you? Give me the... Stop, will you? Please, stop. Maybe he's got it. Oh, <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, shit. Stop! This is no laughing matter. 
Never mind the letter. What do you want? We want to show you the eighth wonder of the world. And it's not on a postcard. No, in the flesh. Stupendous. Dynamic. Why, she's colossal. What? Seeing is believing. Yes, and we'll prove you. Come on, Wolfie. Let's show you. Wait here. We'll get right back. We'll be right back. Stay right there. Now, do you understand why I want you to give up this theater? It's overrun with echoes and lunatics. Dad built this old theater with his whole life. I don't believe he'd want me to give it up. Probably not. He was a showman, not a businessman. Yet if he knew the trouble it would cause you, he'd want you to dispose of it. Somehow I think he'd rather have me keep it open with a show. And you know, if I had a hit, I could pay back all the money I borrowed from you. A hit in this jinx house? Joan, let me try to get rid of the theater before you lose everything to your creditors. Take it over, my dear. <laughs> Lady, you're now going to really hear something. Yes, ma'am. Presenting Sally, the only singing seal in captivity, born on Christmas Day. Yeah. <laughs> She's a Christmas seal. Come on down. Come on. Get over here. Sit down with the other. Now, do your stuff. Play it like it never played before. Me, 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 me. La, 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 la. Sally, please sing. Come on. Oh, Sally, this is your favorite tune. Come on. Sally, you can't let us down now. And just when we got a chance to get into a big show. Wait a minute, boys. You're wasting your time. I haven't any show. What? I haven't been a show in the theater for two years. Yeah, but we saw a sign down there. What about those billboards outside? Well, those are the old Ramsey Taylor show. Oh, <laughs> oh Ramsey Taylor. Hey, we know him well, don't we? <laughs> We're just like brothers. Ramsey Taylor's dead. Dead? Certainly, don't you remember? He wrote and told us all about it. It's too bad. He was murdered two years ago during a dress rehearsal. Right in this room. On that very spot. Oh! Come on, let's get out of here. No wonder Sally wouldn't sing in here. Oh! Oh, I'm sorry. Noises frighten me. Oh, for a boiler factory. What? <laughs> I said, I'm sorry noises frighten you. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sorry I've wasted all your time. But I like the pretty noises you made on the piano. Well, then it wasn't a waste. I met you. You like my music? More noise? Have you more? A whole portfolio of noise, practically bedlam. Give me bedlam. Hey, is this your car? No. Oh, oh the car. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Well, it certainly is our car. You don't suppose for one minute we'd be driving a car that doesn't belong to us, do you? Certainly it's our car. We've had the car for over ten years. It's a little thing we whipped up ourselves. Yeah. Here. Don't you know enough not to park next to a fire plug? I'll get out of here before I give you a ticket. Yes, officer. Well, you heard what he said. Get out of here. Yeah, but I don't know how to drive a car. Well, you're going to learn fast. Come on, come on, what's the bad news? Hey, listen, they've sold our filling station. How much? $150. We're rich, Ollie, we're rich! <laughs> we're rich! There, what did I tell you? Shh! <laughs> what's the matter now? You know, something seems to tell me we shouldn't have sold our business. Now we've got nothing. Shame on you. Shame on you. We're worth over a million dollars. A million dollars? Yes! You wouldn't take a half a million for your half of Sally, would you? No. Neither would I. You're right. You're right. 
We're worth exactly one million one hundred and fifty dollars <laughs> and seventeen cents. <laughs> million dollars. Girls, girls, come quickly. I have something to tell you. A million dollars. What kind of dollars? Show of mine's a knockout. Miss Alge is crazy about it. I was made to order for Sally. We'll make her a sensation overnight. I can see it now. Her name on Broadway. In lights. How big? That big. Oh, uh, now, what do you think we are? No. Well, what's the matter? It's not big enough. All right, then, that big. It's more like it. What do you say, boys? Are you with us? Well, it sounds okay to me. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Don't jump at collusions. Are you sure Sally's got the star in part? Why, the show was written around her. <laughs> it's a water carnival. Now, fellas, uh, I hate to... Come uh, on, speak up. We're with you. Yeah, come on. Don't be afraid. We're regular fellas. Well, you know, it'll, uh, it'll take a little money. Oh, well, we got a little money. Certainly. We're gamblers. We're sports. What do you think we are? We'll do anything for Sally. We'll put Sally over if it costs us every cent. Oh, it won't take that much. Besides, with you fellas in our organization, why, we can get unlimited credit. Brother, we're in. Oh, thanks. I'll run and phone Miss Eldridge right away. Yes, and I'll ride along, too. What do you think of that? Oh, that's swell. <laughs> thanks. All right, you follow her. Come right back. Oh. Hey, we're booked. <laughs> we're booked. Let's tell Sally. Hey, Sally. Sally, 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 Sally you're going to be a star. You're going to be a star. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. Are you caught? No, my footage is... <laughs> Come on, we got to go and phone. Are you Miss Jones' routine? Oh, that's all right. We'll see it later. Just think we're entertaining the press. Good. Yes, and we'd better get in there. They'll be getting restless. Don't worry about that. We've got a lot of business to do right now. Gentlemen, morning. Good morning. Uh, may I have just a moment of your time? Hey, we got nothing but time. Yeah, but hurry up. I'll tell you that right now. Uh, would you just sign this uh, order? It's Wait a minute. Let me do it. It's my turn. Why, oh, you put two crosses. That's right. We got twice as much coming today. Oh, uh, boy. Boy, a uh, rush. But, uh, hey, listen, what's, uh, what's this for? Well, then, why, I'm going to fashion this after a copy of a gown worn by the Empress Josephine. Josephine? Yes. Uh, yes. <clears throat> now, uh, uh, to begin with, we're going to have absolutely no back. Very daring, of course. Now, across the shoulders, we're going to have little baby pearls. <clears throat> then the mother pearls, of course, will slowly uh, descend to the... Uh, <clears throat> now, the bodice. The bodice is going to be uh, very uh, snug. Now, to reveal the alluring curves of the feminine body, <laughs> uh, we're going to have... Um, some gold uh, cloth, you see, sort of uh, folding very uh, beautifully into the very first uh, flounce. <clears throat> <clears throat> then, you see, we'll have the uh, pleats. <clears throat> now, we will have, um, we will have the uh, pleats. <laughs> we'll have pleats, you see, made of the black or possibly brown or, uh, or blue, if uh, satin uh, cut on uh, the bias. The what? Uh, on the, uh, 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 satin uh, cut on, uh, on the bias. <laughs> <laughs> It's very original, don't you think so? A cut, uh, uh, what's the matter with him? Hey, hey, what is the bias? Explain to me, what's the bias? Why, uh, the bias is the material, um, uh, uh, now, of course, I don't know just... Well, do you use much? I, don't much? Know, I don't know just how many yards we'll... Uh, the bodice, of course, we'll take 12 yards, then from the bodice down to the first flounce, we say it'll be 24, it'll be 24, 24, that'll be 35, that'll be 40, 42, 42, 45, 68! Screen, oh. I, I, I have never really been pleased <laughs> in my life. Haven't you gone yet? Go on, get going. Money is no object. I'm leaving everything to me, everything on my shoulders. What do you know about this, Billy? I don't know any more about it than you do. You've been passing out my dough like it was peanuts. I invest 30000 in here just because you're going to get me the theater. And what happens? Here they are, rehearsing a nose. What happens if the show makes a hit? It's already pays off those notes and where do I stand? I'm so surprised you could knock me over with a feather. I could, but I'm not going to be so delicate. How are you, Mr. Bailey? How are you? <laughs> hey, is he tickled to see you? 
How are the two oil millionaires? Ah, uh, marvelous, generous to a fault. Must be grand to be rich. I think you got something there. Oh, where's Miss Eldridge? Miss Eldridge? She's in the office entertaining the gentlemen of the press. Bailey. What are those two guys doing here? They're here to meet those two millionaires. She only. Wouldn't it be marvelous to be a millionaire? Ah, millionaire. To travel to all the ends of the world. Live at the Ritz. And have breakfast in bed. Breakfast in bed. Say, by the way, you owe me a half a dollar. Where is it? Oh, you're not going to forget that 50 cents I owe you, are you? Why should I forget it? You owe it to me, don't you? I got a little surprise for you. Yeah? See that spoon? Shame. You know you can go to penitentiary for stealing spoons? Hey, you know you can get a dollar for that at any pawn shop? Well, what's that got to do with You the know you can get a dollar for that spoon at any pawn shop? Well, what's that got to do with the 50 cents you owe me? Oh, I, I owe you 50 cents? Yeah. Here. Now you owe me 50 cents. Yeah, well, here. Now we're even. <laughs> All right, boys, enjoy yourself. I'll be back in just a minute. Okay. Mr. Bailey. Hello, Joan. Celebration? We're entertaining members of the press. <coughs> oh, I'm sorry, Joan. You know Pete Phillips. Why, yes, how do you do? Aren't you the gentleman who wanted to buy my theater? Yes, you haven't changed your mind, have I you? I should say not. I have a hit on my hands. She oh. hopes she has a hit. <laughs> Just make yourself at home, will you? Thank you, Joan. Now, wait a minute. Don't try to make a touch. we got to make a hit with these millionaires. Uh, don't worry, please. When I get through with them, they'll give me an oil well all for myself. Hey, wait a minute. Fix your tie. Oh, right. fix your own tie. You ready? You ready? Yeah. <laughs> Boy, the press want to meet the backers of the show. I'm for that. Sure, why not? Gentlemen, we're going to drink a toast. Yeah, let's drink to the petroleum twins. Chumps. Yeah, tell them who the beggars are. Let us spend all this dough. Gentlemen, to the two men who've made all this possible, the backers of our show, Mr. Olson and Mr. Johnson. <coughs> Boys, you're gamblers. I hope you make a million. Yeah, let's have another drink. I need her. No, no, listen, wait, wait, wait. We got to go out and get Sally a drink. <laughs> hey, listen, wait a minute. You know, I like you fellas. You don't pretend to be anything but what you really are. Yeah. Especially if you ain't. Yeah. He's always clowning. <laughs> don't look now, but we're supposed to be the millionaires. Are we? Oh, we haven't got a thing. Gee, I'm all confused. Yeah, they're all confused. Well, their word is as good as ours. Where are you going? I'm going back and stop them before they spend a million dollars we haven't got. Broke again. Oh. All right, hurry, 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 hurry. It's just starting, folks. It's just commencing. The greatest show on the mid. 32 spectacular attractions combined in one great show. Over here, let me call your attention to the Weekly Sisters. And they're two of South Sea Island dancing girls. Come on, come on, get out of my way. Come on, Philip. Stop that fellow and clear out of here, everybody. As for you, your goose is cooked. What goose? Oh, now what? Well, Mr. Bailey. What's the matter? Plenty. Those men are imposters. Your two oil millionaires have an oil can between them. Investigate it thoroughly. Olson and Johnson own no oil property. Left Gusherville owing everybody. Tulsa Detective Agency. I don't believe it. No, you no, don't. No, no, you don't. don't. Come oh, on, get out of here. Never mind. Get up. Come on. Get in there. What's the idea? There they are. Ask them. Why did you do this to me, boys? We never told anybody that we were millionaires. <laughs> <laughs> you see, Don said the show needed a little money. Yeah, and we had a little money. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> About that little. Let's take it out of their hide. Yes, yes. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. It's not their fault. It's ours. We're jumping at conclusions. Oh, stop this chatter. Throw those hams out of my theater. What business is it of yours? Because I gave him the money you've been living on. Is this true? It is if he can prove it. But the theater's in my name and I'm taking over. What? what? Come on, get out, everybody. I got you. Okay. I'll be seeing you later, Bailey. <laughs> You can't pay the money you owe me, so get these people off my property. And I thought you were my friend. 
I could kill you. No, I'd like to do it for you. Wait a minute, Don. Wait a minute. Let me do it. Let me do it. I'd like to do it once for you. I'll kill you myself. That's what I'll do. Can't do that to that woman. I'll take you, strangle you to death. That's what I'll do you. Holy, holy. Come on, holy. Come on. Why, you dirty ass murder the guy. He ever dealt with me. That's what I'll do. I'll kill him. That's what I'll do. Hey, hey, hey. Why didn't you hit him? Well, I just didn't want to start a scene. That's all. Get him out of here and say what you can. Girl, take those costumes right off. Immediately. You're all fired. Uh, <clears throat> hey, be careful with them, girls, too. Now, listen. Well, that's that. Close before we open. That ends it. We're through. Through nothing. We're just beginning. We'll open this show and pay that baboon off. Hey, everybody, wait. Come here and listen to me. Come here, everybody. Hurry up. This ape is trying to take your jobs away. We're closing on Miss Eldridge just because she owes him a few nickels. If you close the show now, you won't get a dime for your sets or costumes. Let's go on with it, and you'll get paid off in full. Suppose the show's a flop? Well, take a look at it. Give the girl a chance. Don't listen to him. You want to lose all your money? No, no, no. Well, we'll give her a chance. What do you say? It's all right with me. All right, then. We'll look at it. Come on, let's go. Oh, all right, everybody. Now, on your toes, this has got to be good. Place it. Joe, they're going to give us a chance. Now, we're not fired? Of course you're not fired. You're going to make this show a hit. Okay, get everything in place. Hurry up. You fellas are wasting your time. Well, it's our time. We can do with it as we please, Kevin. What are you talking about, wasting our time? All set? Yeah, all set. All right, folks. Do your best. Hockey, hockey, hockey. Friends, for our first feature this evening, we present the stellar attraction, Old Man Johnson and Sally, the one and only singing seat. <laughs> Well, Johnny, how do you feel today? Oh, I feel all right. Oh, yeah. idea of the hangover. Ah, oh, you didn't get home last night, huh? I'm supposed to say that. No, why don't you say it? You're supposed to say it for me. Well, that's what I'm trying to do. Well, I'm the dummy. No one's disputing that. And if you're going to continue sitting on my knee, you better change your tactics. What? I say you better change your tactics. Oh, where oh, would I please? Please? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, where would I <laughs> And now, ladies and gentlemen, as our concluding number, we will smoke a cigarette, sing a song, and drink a glass of water all at the same time, simultaneously. <laughs> You will double cross me, will you? You will double cross me, will you? You will double cross me. Hey, he got one. Sally, the one and only singing seal. Bygones. Bailey, something's the matter. Bailey, what's the matter? Oh, I don't know. 
What happened to Bailey? He's been shot. Oh. Yes, and he's dead. Oh, he's been murdered, oh, all <laughs> Look, Ovi, we knocked him out of his seat. Quiet. All right, now, stay back. Stay back. And he's been shot. Shot? I'll bet I know who did it. Who? Sally. Sally? I just saw her beat it. She had a guilty look on her conscience. I know. You forgot to unload that gun again. Did I? Gun? Yes. We got to get rid of that gun quick. committed and the law demands payment. The killer is right here because all the exits except the stage door are locked from the inside. Now here we are and here we stay until I finish my job if it takes all winter. Now someone kill Bailey. Who did it? All right, speak up. Who did it? Where's the guilty one? If you don't talk, I'll be compelled to use sterner methods. Hmm. Hey, you want to try it? Take my hand. What do you know about this? About what? The murder. Oh, well, you see, when hey, we... listen, were... officer, we don't know anything about this. Where were you when Bailey was shot? Shot? I thought they found him out in the alley with a knife in his hand. Who do you think poisoned him? I don't know. Who? Nobody. He hung himself. Yeah, but how do you know he hung himself? How do I know? Why, the gas jet was wide open. Well, was there much gas? Much gas? He was cut from ear to ear. Yeah, but did he bleed much? Every bone in his body was broke. He'd been in the water over 76 hours. Yeah, but, but was he dead? He was awful with. I know, but was he dead? I don't know. He's going to phone and let me know in the morning. Personally, I think it was suicide. Suicide? Wait a minute. Don't forget that I know a few things, too. Yeah, well, I know as few as you do. Out of here. We're going to stay here all night till I find out who shot Bailey. <sighs> Call me at seven, will you? You don't happen to have a pair of pajamas on you. Yes. No! you, you got to let me in. i got to get in there. This is of great importance. Inspector. Inspector. I don't know whether this means anything or not, but... Just before Bailey was killed, I was at the stage door. Yes, yes. Well, two men came in, and one of them had a machine gun. What did they look like? They were about this tall, and they had long red beards, and they flew way out over the audience. What? Why, what are you... Get down. Get down. Look at that. Come on, Roger. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Stop. Stop. McGee. They think this is a joke. I'll lock them all up. It's up to us. Poor Sally. Hey, Keith, you can't do this. I don't want any more of your double talk. We want to confess. Confess? Sally did it. Sally? Who's Sally? Huh, she works in the act. Oh, your girlfriend, eh? You've been keeping her undercover. What does she look like? Oh, she's got the most beautiful brown eyes and the smoothest skin you've ever saw. Yeah. How tall is she? Oh, she's about that tall, sitting down. Standing up. <laughs> when we give her a fish, she comes up to there. She wouldn't by any chance have a long red beard down to there. No. <laughs> but she's got whiskers like that. <laughs> say, are you trying to kid me? There might be something in what they say, Inspector. Sally's the seal in their act. And she did fire a gun. Where is it? I hit it. McGee, don't let anyone leave here. I Take me to it. No, Sally. No. No, no. 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 Oh. What is it now? Sally swallowed the evidence. 
Oh, she did, did she? Well, that isn't going to stop me. I'm going to take that seal to the hospital, and for your sake, boys, she better have the gun. And while we're there, I'm going to put you under observation, too. Hey, Murphy. Hey, Murphy. You're not going to let him operate on Sally, are you? Give us a break, won't a you? break? Yeah, look at that trusting face. Look at those innocent eyes. I tell you, i got to find that gun. Oh, we'll find that gun for How? you. How? How? Leave it to us. Sally will give us anything she's got. <laughs> Inspector Murphy. He's coming. Why, Inspector Murphy? Oh, it isn't what you think it is. Those birds gave me the runaround. That seal didn't have any gun. Oh, we found the gun. You did? But it didn't kill Bailey. It wasn't the right caliber. Then I want to talk to that girl. Where is she? In the office with her boyfriend. I'll go to her. Uh-oh. This way. Oh. oh. What are they doing? Let's find out. Just a moment. What's going on here? Nothing's going on. It's going off. We're shipping everything out of here. Oh, I have a hard old man. How do you expect us to put on a show without costumes or scenery? Why don't you broadcast it? You know, radio. 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 <laughs> radio. Radio. <laughs> Mark. Now, who are we going to see? The head man, and nobody else will do. Good. If he turns us down, that'll be final. Uh... Of all the voices I've ever heard. What about Mr. McDougall? Oh, shut it all. Shut it all. But Mr. McDougall. Oh. Oh, but Mr. McDougall, she, she was sent to us by... I want to coax people to buy McDougal's mackerels, not frighten them into yes, it. Yes, but Mr. McDougal, now uh, please be calm. Uh, calm. Listen, I'm selling McDougal's mackerels. I need a program, something startling, a slap bang slogan. Well, I, we've got it. What do you think of that? McDougal's mackerel makes a marvelous meal for millions. Who are you? <laughs> well, we're not even to the end here. <laughs> Don't move. Listen, we'll give you an audition. <laughs> Cute. That's just a sample. He's a genius. He can play anything. I've got a million of them. What do you have? Rachmaninoff's prelude. I beg your pardon. Rachmaninoff's prelude. Yeah. Rachmaninoff's prelude. Have you heard it? Yes. Rock, minute, Rock. 
Phillips trailers. Give me another A. Give me a long A. Is that long enough? You heard what he said, didn't you? Rock Meninoff's Prelude. Oh, Rock Meninoff's Prelude. <laughs> yes, and I'm going to play it for him. What do you think of that? somewhere, but you'll have to pick it out yourself. <laughs> Rock Mininoff's prelude. Yes, when am I going to hear it? Right now. We'll make it up as we go along. Rock Mininoff's prelude. It's Rock Mininoff's prelude. And when it comes to preludes, that is quite a dish. Jonah's in a whale. Jonah's in a whale. I can't remember. 30 days. at September. But I never can forget Mac about the Jinx Theatre. What the public want to know is who committed the murder. We know. The what? You know who the murderer wait, is? Wait a minute, wait a minute. You took his words right out of my mouth. That's what I've been trying to tell you, that we're going to disclose the murder on your broadcast. Produce him on the air. Sure. Millions of people with their ears to the radio. While for the first time, there is broadcasted from any program the identity of the murderer from the scene of the crime and brought to you through the courtesy of Mac. Here goes, Maxwell. Program. I know, but we're just testing the mic. Okay, George. Well. What are we going to do, Ollie? We don't know who the murderer is. Well, let's tell him the truth and face the music. <clears throat> oh, Don, we... Don't tell we'd me like a to... thing. I was never so glad to see anybody in my life. Yes. He was worried, afraid you wouldn't show up. <laughs> <laughs> well, why didn't you tell him? Oh, I didn't have a chance. Only, only. <laughs> We've got a packed house for one. Hey, you. Come in. What are you two guys trying to do? Make monkeys out of the police department? Oh, no, sir. Come clean, lugs. Who committed this murder? Well, you see, we just remember that if you know and haven't tipped off the police department, you're guilty of a felony. 
What's that? A felony obstructing justice, aiding and abetting a criminal. Seven to 14 years. Seven to 14 years. Seven to seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, fourteen years. <laughs> That's a long time, isn't it? Seven to seven, fourteen. <laughs> Inspector, I'm surprised at you. A man of your intelligence to fall for a gag like that. <laughs> we have no idea who the murderer is. No! Oh! Don't say that I didn't warn you. I should say that. I'll tell everybody. Don't worry about that, officer. Why did you tell him that? Why, Mr. McDougal, what a night, what a crowd. And when we get through, we will have McDougal's mackerel on the tip of everybody's tongue. Listen, you crooks. You promised me the murderer, and you're coming through with him. Understand? If you don't, I'll have you jailed for taking money under false pretenses. Uh, Mr. McDougal, you don't mean to think that you... I just heard you admit you had no idea who it was. We don't. What? We don't think that, that it's necessary to tell the police all of our business. I've put $50,000 into this broadcast. I've advertised it all over the country. If you make McDougal's mackerels a laughingstock, why, I'll break every bone in your body. I tell oh, you, I don't know... McDougal, wait a minute. The boys know what they're doing. They say they'll produce the murderer, and they will, won't you, boys? Yeah, we know who he is. We know where he is. We've got our thumb on him all the time. Which thumb? Hey, come on. We'll just get back to this. I don't care. Well, I'll tell you, I don't... Hey, Mr. McDougal, you want to talk to me? We're going to take the first bus out of town. But we haven't got any money. And we'd better walk, because we can't hang around here. Yeah, but I hate walking. I've got an idea. You killed Bailey. Did I win? No, you really didn't kill him. You're going to pretend that you did. But I didn't do it. I know it, but they can't prove it. Of course they can't prove it. I think you got something there. Come over here, I'll tell you. Just what to say. I'll try to make it a little bit more simple. All you've got to do, I take you in front of the microphone, and you say, I killed him because he was a rat, and I'd do it all over again. But I didn't kill him. I know you didn't kill him. You're just going to pretend that you killed him. Now try it again. I kill him because I'm a rat now. No, no. You're not the rat. He's the rat. Can we both be rats? No. Hey, say I killed him. I killed him. There. That's it. But I didn't... No. no. Hey, try this. I. I. Kill. Kill. Him. Him. Because. Because. He. He. Was. Was. Hey. Hey. Rat. Rat. That's it. Now try it. I kill him because I'm a rat now. Don't no. kill him. Watch me. I killed him because he was a rat and I would do it all over again. Oh, you killed him. Well, it's okay with me. Come on. No. Oh, I don't want to do it. You got me all mixed oh, up. Well, well, try it once again. Once again. He killed me because I was a rat no, and I'll no, do it No, no, no. All you got to say is I killed Bailey. I refuse to talk. That's what you I refuse? I refuse to talk. That's what I do. Are you also in Johnson? Sure. Headquarters. Chief, you tell me to look after you boys till after the broadcast. Well, what for? We didn't do anything. Are you aware of the fact that your lives are in danger? You know that you're the only two men on Earth who know who killed Bailey? Yes, us and the guy that really killed him. Yes, and he's possibly out to get you before you have an opportunity to broadcast that fact. Boy, you never told me that. Was just... well, listen, the chief's sitting over there in the car and he wants to talk it over with you. Oh, hey, sure, sure, why not? He'll be delighted. There's no chief in here. Here's the chief, and he speaks six languages. Yeah, get in there. Come on, get in and quit monkeying around. Come on. McDougal's Mackerel presents the McDougal Theater of the Air. The curtain rises on one of the most thrilling and unusual broadcasts in radio history. You are to be witnesses in the actual apprehension of a desperate criminal. A murder was committed in this very theater. Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, sometime during the next 30 minutes, the mystery of this ruthless killing will be solved here on this stage before your very eyes. Hey, Mary, it might be on the level. They're putting a policeman at every door. Well, here they are. Step into the waiting room, Jen. Come on, boy, get going. Come on. Uh, glad to see you. Gentlemen, you'll live to regret this. <laughs> you should be so lucky. <laughs> yeah. Sit down. You ain't going nowhere. Yeah, go on. Sit down. Make yourself at home. Yeah, where's Spike? He's bringing in their baby. Baby? Yeah. <laughs> what am I supposed to do with that sea serpent? How should I know? It went with the job. You can keep it for a pet. Ah. Baby, eh? 
Okay, Slug. We deliver the goods to you. They're yours. Can I do it now? Uh, now, don't get over, Rangers. The boss will phone you when. Sure he's got the number? Why, sure. Come on, my work's done. Come on. Now, uh, just be comfortable, boys. It, uh, it won't be long. Say, do any of you guys play uh, chickens? Yeah, I do. Oh, that's great. We well, just have a game here all by our team. Have you seen Olsen Johnson? Yeah, they went out in the alley a few minutes ago. What? The sea beast with him. Looks so good. Well, whoa. Give it to Oh, no, sir. No, sir. Well, you can't do that. Make a move, then make it back again. Yeah, but he didn't take his nose off of the checker. Yes, he did. He didn't. Well, he did, too. He didn't. I say he did. Yeah. He did. The boss. Now don't move nothing. Hello, Slug. This is Phillips. Have you got the. Uh... Yeah, they're here, all right. All right. Go ahead, take care of them. Now. Sure. Well, what did he say? He said for me to go on with a job. Well, go ahead and get it over with. Ah, uh, like fun I will. You want to quit when you're winners, huh? Well, we won't do anything of the kind. I'll go on and move. Good girl, Sally. What was that? Oh, I just said I hope the game ends in a rally. That's your move. <laughs> oh, my man. Huh? Keep, huh? Now I am going to carry out the boss's order. Which one of you guys want to be poisoned? You ain't got any preference, have you? Oh, you wouldn't think that you could... I'll get together. We ain't going to draw no straws about this, you know. Alley up! What kind of a crack was that, huh? Add a gal, Sally! Add a gal, Sally! <laughs> hey! How'd you get your hands untied? Well, I've had them untied all the time. Well, why didn't you do something? What, and get shot? Here, untie me. Answer that phone, and be careful. Hello? Hello. Jimmy Slug, quick. Who? Oh, he's out. Hurry, we got to get back to the theater. You've got to confess. <laughs> What about Sally? We'll come back for Sally after I confess. Now it's every man for himself. Tell me, tell me, how did they get away? Oh, I don't know. I had them both dead to rights. And you know, them guys have got a, a, a trained seal with them. And when I wasn't looking, she snuck up in back of me and slugged me. You better watch out, too, because she's still around here and she'd rather slug you. You stop. I've got to stop them. Yes, this is the end of everything. What are you going to say? I kill him because he's a rat and I'll do it again. You got it! Let him in. Hmm. I'm a rat and he killed me and I'll do it again. What do you think of that? He's a killer and I'm a rapper. Where is he? Ladies and gentlemen, uh, at the beginning of this broadcast, we promised to disclose to you the actual murder of William Bailey. Uh, we regret that we've been obliged to uh, postpone this announcement until the finish of our broadcast. We... <clears throat> but let the men who handle this capture tell you in their own words. Introducing the master sleuths of the MacDougall Mackerel Hour, Mr. Olsen and Mr. Johnson. <laughs> Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, thank you. And now we would like to have each and every one of you cuddle close together 
We would like to have little children run to the protecting arms of their mothers because I know that you all have been anxiously waiting to find out who killed William Bailey. Well, the time has come. He was a rat. No, not now. The killer is in this theater. He's right here. He's on this stage, and his name is... Uh, he was a rat. Get him! There goes a starter's gun, and they're off. In a cloud of dust with the killer fighting the rail. There they go around the first turn with the killer only four shots ahead. There they go. Into the back stretch. Look at them fighting, fighting. It's rather hard to see just what's happening over here. Look at them fighting it out for a blood curdling finish. Just a few steps behind the killer. There they go. Oh, them. My mistake, folks. My mistake. It was just a little surprise because he comes back with a right cross of the jaw. I gave me for the old red basket and down he goes for the count. One, two, three, four. He's up with the count of three. Look, he gets a screaming drive no, 19 yards out of the first bumper and then forced the punt. The ball goes past second base for a hit, kisses the nine ball and lands in the side pocket. Uh, through the courtesy of McDougal's mackerel. Get him! Come on, get him, boys! Come on! It was a beautiful takeoff, folks. He flew through the air with the greatest of ease and was just about to make a perfect three-point landing when he hiked. Through the courtesy of McDougal's mackerel. a lot of excitement here tonight, folks, and things are getting hotter and hotter. No, it's my mistake. They're getting colder and colder. Yeah, in fact, I think it's snowing. It is snowing. Right. Through the courtesy of McDougal's Macro. Oh, what a night. What a storm. Storm? It looks like an avalanche. But does it stop us, folks? Does it stop us? Yes. Yes or no? We carry on and on and on until we cry out, Excelsior! Through the courtesy of McDougal's mackerel. It's a band, folks. There they go. There goes Kachikov. There goes Rachmaninoff. There goes Rubinoff. Oh, they're up. They're down. shot description of the battle at the Eldridge Theater. Through the courtesy of McDougal's back. Oh! Oh! Hurry, hurry, you've got two minutes to go. Two minutes to go. What a game, folks. What a game. The score is tied at 6 four. The killer has the ball on the five-yard line. It's third down and five to go for a touchdown. Oh, and look at the blues. They are all pencil set, repeating in unison. Thou shalt not pass. Thou shalt not pass. The killer is dead. He's in a huddle. Thousands watch his run. Look. What's the matter? Oh, I'm out of bullets, Jeff. I'm out of bullets. The killer is going to pick. <laughs> oh. oh, pardon me, folks. But due to conditions over which we had no control, we had to interrupt our broadcast. Uh, where was I? The, the killer. Oh, the killer. The killer, eh? Well, folks, we promised you the murder of William Bailey. Yes, yes, the killer, yes, yes, yes. Well, he's right in this theater, and his name is Peter Stuyvesant Phillips. <laughs> and remember, folks, that the capture of this villain comes to you <laughs> through the courtesy of MacDougall's mackerel. And now we'll have a few words from the killer himself. Hello, Ma. I put up a heck of a fight, but I lost. 
And always remember, folks, that our motto is dependability. And on next Saturday night, at this same time, we will return with bigger and better surprises. So tell everybody, spread the news all over town. In the meantime, this is Olson <laughs> and Johnson. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.